Hey there, superstar, Michelle Villalobos here, and I'm gonna share with you a very simple sales structure and strategy so that you can convert more of your prospects into coaching clients. Let's go. Sales is the lifeblood of any coaching business, of any business business, actually. If you're not making sales, you don't have a business. And so this is a fundamental skill set that every coach needs to learn. And here's the funny thing. I thought I was an expert in sales when I started my coaching business. And I brought all my old sales strategies from my old sales jobs into my coaching and consulting business. Did they work? No, they did not work because those strategies are built around high pressure tactics. I was selling condos, I was selling advertisements for magazines, I was selling artwork. All of those old sales jobs and all the sales training I ever did in those jobs were all about how to get people to say yes. Now you might think that that's a really great skill set, and I'm not gonna deny that it helped me in those jobs, but when I started bringing those same high pressure tactics into selling coaching, they backfired on me. People resisted and it broke trust. So here's the thing. Coaching is a very special thing to sell. In order to be able to both sell your coaching services and serve your coaching clients, you've got to understand that the same things that will work in those old sales tactics, all that pressure that would get somebody to say yes, might hurt you when it comes time to actually coach those people. And that's because a coaching relationship needs to be built on trust. And what creates trust is for a client to know that you have their best interests at heart. If you're pushing them to say yes so that you can get them into a coaching program that's not a right fit, there will be most likely some sort of break in trust or disconnect and it'll make it very difficult to serve that client. I like to say how you sell is how you serve. And the corollary to that is how they buy is how they behave. The initial sales conversation that you have with a coaching prospect is an opportunity for you two to come together, establish trust, and really see if you're gonna be a good fit to coach together. So the optimal intention to have heading into a sales conversation, a discovery call or a strategy session, whatever you call it, instead of it being that your intention is to get a yes or to make a sale, the intention has to be instead to serve the client and help them take the next best step towards what they want. That means that if the next best step is to work with you, that you know how to lead them to that outcome, but if the next best step for them is to do something else or not to work with you, then you need to lead them to that outcome. And that means releasing the outcome of getting the yes and instead committing to the outcome of serving the client. That's why I call my approach to sales, sales as service. Service being an acronym for my seven steps that I'm gonna share with you in a minute. Sales as service is about serving the client first and foremost and having that sales conversation be so good and so valuable and deliver such insight to the person that whether they buy or not, either way, they're gonna walk away having felt elevated and served by you. And when that happens, you're way more likely to get a sale or maybe even to get a referral. So let's talk about the seven steps. Sales as service stands for Services, S-E-R-V-I-C-E. -E. So the first S in service is to set. And this, the word set means set your state and set the frame. So set is all about initially setting your state before you ever even get on the call is about getting present, grounded, taking some deep breaths, and setting your intention to serve the client. The second part of set is to set the frame which is setting the frame within which you and the client are having the conversation. This is something you do with the client. So setting the frame, I call it a pre-frame, at the beginning of the call is basically setting up 
how the call is gonna go and creating some basic agreements. For example, here's my preframe. Hello, how are you? Is this still a good time? Okay, great. Then I move into the preframe, which is, the way I like to run these calls is I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. I'm gonna be listening, taking notes. And my intention is that I can help you gain some insights, some ideas, some perspective on what's going on. And the second objective is to see if we're a good fit to work together. And at the end of the call, if we decide that it is a good fit and we do wanna to work together, then at that moment, we'll I'll explain what that could look like and we'll make a decision whether we work together or not work together and either way is fine. There's no pressure. How does that work for you? 99.99% of the time, people are gonna to agree to that. In fact, I don't think I've ever had somebody push back on my preframe. And the beautiful thing about a preframe is it sets up you as the leader of the call and it sets up that they are going to make a decision at the end, that together you're gonna to make a decision. This also sets you up in the eventuality that they're not a fit, that you also can let them off the hook by saying something along the lines of, listen, based on everything you're telling me, I don't think we're fit to work together and here's what I recommend instead. Okay, but back to the service uh, acronym. So we talked about set your state, set the frame. The E is for engage and elicit. And engage and elicit is the fun part of the call where we start asking questions and we move into this discovery process. We're asking about vision, possibilities, what they desire, what problems are in the way, what they think they need to overcome those problems. And we're basically getting the lay of the land and we're starting to formulate a sense of what's really going on here. While we're doing that, we're also performing the R of service, which is reflect and record. And reflect and record is all about letting that person know through our words and through our actions that we're hearing them, that we're getting them and that we're listening and we're receiving them. So we might say things like, wow, that sounds like it was really challenging or, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you did that or you know, something like that to just be engaged without trying to sell or coach. And record means that we might wanna be taking some notes and it's, clients like seeing us taking notes by the way, so that we're recording things that we might wanna remember and reflect back later, right? So that we're not interrupting the client constantly. And then once we've got a good sense of what's going on, we've got some rapport going, that's when we want to validate, that's the V in service, validate the client's experience, validate what they're going through. That might sound something like, you know, I see this all the time, or you're not alone, you're not the only one that faces this problem, or I, I work with people like you day in and day out. You're, you know, this is normal. Basically, we're validating their experience. We're not trying to make them feel bad. That's another old school sales tactic where, where your salesperson kind of insults you. Have you ever had that happen to you? So that, I don't recommend that because again, you've got to be in a coaching conversation with this person later if you decide to work together. The I is when things start to shift a little bit and Instead of the client doing all the talking, you're gonna start doing some of the, more of the talking. So the, the I is for inspire with ideas and insights. So this is where you might say something like, all right, I've got a really good sense, I think, of what's going on. At this point, you've already reflected it back and validated. And you say, I, I think I'm ready to share with you. I'm ready to share with you my insights and ideas. Are you ready to receive those? Do you feel like you gave me everything I need? And usually they'll say yes or no, there's one more thing or something like that. And then you present to them now, here's what I'm seeing. And the idea here is for you to deliver some sort of new insight or aha, something that they didn't state outright, but that you can glean from what they're saying. This is where you get to show your power, your skills as a coach for how deeply were you listening. This is where you get to reflect maybe what you read between the lines. You might say to someone, listen, you said all these things and by the way, I saw that your energy really shifted when you started talking about this other thing. And, you know, So making observations that are not obvious is really good at this juncture to show that you have unique and special insight. This might also be where you il illuminate a blind spot to them. And, and you might wanna check in and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing, does this resonate with you? Right, always seeing, 
like giving them the opportunity to receive it or not receive it because part of what you're doing here is you're observing how do they respond to your coaching? How do they respond to your giving them information and ideas and things like that? If you see that someone's oof, super resistant, you might decide that that's not somebody you wanna work with. That leads me to the next piece, which is the C of service, which is check. And what we're doing here is we're checking for fit and we're checking for commitment. Checking for fit means, is this a right fit client? Is this someone that I truly believe I can serve? Now, by the way, you do not have to have it all figured out yet. You do not have to know the answers to all their problems in order to enroll them in your program. You just have to know that they're a right fit, that you want to serve them, and that you believe that they are ready and willing to be led by you. Checking for commitment means straight up, in my opinion, asking them, are you committed? Are you ready to do this work? And I tend to like to do a little bit of a, you know, kind of a push away sale in the sense that I want people to know that it's work. I don't want to sugarcoat it or pussyfoot around it. I want to make sure that people understand that if we're gonna to work together, they might have some challenging times. I might push them to do work that they have been resisting. I wanna know that they're committed, that they're a fit, and that they're committed. If the answer to both of those is yes, and they are committed at a level 10 out of 10, and I straight up ask them, how committed are you on a scale of one to 10? And I'm looking for a 10. So if they got that, then we move to the final step, and that, and only then, is where I will lay out the programs, the price, and I will invite them formally. I, I'm inviting you to join this program and this is what it looks like. And I don't invite just anyone. In fact, just recently did an accounting of my strategy sessions and I only make an invitation to about one out of three to one out of four people. So I'm really holding high standards for who I enroll because I know that when I enroll the wrong person, it's bad for both them and for me. So that's my seven step process. I hope this was helpful for you. I also have a ton of other videos here on how to do sales for coaching and marketing for coaching and how to build and grow your business. And if you've already watched a bunch of my videos, then let's connect. Consider maybe signing up for one of my programs. You can find out more about what I offer at superstaractivator.com go.